The movie begins with a guy named Chiyo, an expert in stealing safe spanks and antiquities quickly and with high professionalism. One night, Jaehyuk is in a place to steal a valuable artifact, which is heavily guarded. Despite the difficulty of opening the safe, Jaehyuk is able to open it in just one minute. However, when he steals the artifact, it falls and breaks. Saddened by this, Jaehyuk begins to think of how to fix it and decides to make an exact copy of it. After completing the redesign, he goes to someone who buys antiquities. When the buyer sees it, he knows it is not original and refuses to buy it. Jaehyuk then threatens the buyer, telling him that if he does not buy the piece, he will tell people that he sold a counterfeit artifact. Out of fear, the buyer decides to buy the piece from Jaehyuk. Jaehyuk went out with a friend of his named Jian Gon, who has experience repairing cars and making explosives. When they arrived at Gwyn's house, Jaehyuk decided to make a machine that would print counterfeit money. He was able to complete the machine, but when he tested it, he discovered that there was a problem with the counterfeit money. When alcohol was put on the money, it would lose its shape and turn out to be fake, so the idea failed. Jaehyuk then decided to rob a jewelry store that had diamonds estimated to be worth $3 million. This theft was one of the most difficult thefts that Jaehyuk would do, as the store had surveillance cameras and thermal sensors everywhere and was fully secured. Gunn suggested an idea to Jai Hyuk and told him that he had a friend who was an expert in hacking. Shigen told Ji Hyuk that he could disable the camera system and the thermal sensors and Ji Hyuk agreed to go along with the suggestion. The next day, they went to meet the hacker John, who had a reputation for being a traitor and betraying people for his own personal gain. However, Shigen decided to trust him as he was a professional in the field of hacking. Later, Ji Yuk attended a painting exhibition and met his girlfriend Yoon, who was an artist. During their conversation, Ji Yuk talked about the necklace she was wearing, which contained diamonds. He revealed that it was a gift from her deceased father, and he wanted to enter a jewelry store to discover what was inside. This was all part of a plan he had in his mind, and he was confident that by using Yoon's necklace, no one would be able to suspect him. Ji Yuk and Yoon went to estimate the price of a diamond, which was worth millions of dollars. Before leaving the store, Jai Hyuk put a bag with a smoke bomb inside it under the chair. He knew the location and type of safe he was going to steal. After they left, he thanked Yoon and drove her home. Jai Hyuk then started to think of a plan to rob the store in just 10 minutes. When the time came to perform the operation, he had activated the smoke bomb that he had placed in the bag. Smoke began to rise from the bag. He asked John to disable the camera and thermal sensor, and John did the job. Jai Hyuk entered the shop. But unfortunately for him, the police knew something was up, and they were on their way to investigate. Jain acted quickly to distract the police and give Jai Hyuk more time to steal. Jai Hyuk managed to find the diamond and started running quickly to escape until they reached the place of the car. Jai Hyuk and his friends were successful in stealing the diamonds worth millions of dollars. On the second day, we see the owner of the jewelry store, Joe, who is a rich gangster that controls the city. Joe had killed his accountant a long time ago by placing him with cement, as the accountant had tried to betray him. Joe was surprised by the potential of Jai Hyuk and his friends, as they had managed to steal from the most powerful safes in the world. At one time, Joe needed people who were skilled in stealing to carry out robberies. To test them, he brought in a thief and made a competition for them, where the person who could open the safe would work with him for thefts, and whoever failed would be killed. Unfortunately, everyone failed to open the safe. So, Joe sent his gang to summon Jae Hyuk and his friends. After a short time, Joe's gang managed to bring Jae Hyuk and his friends. Joe asked them to work for him and promised to give them 5% of the amount they would steal. Jae Hyuk agreed to steal with Joe and his gang. Joe told them that he had a large amount of illegal money that was imported into Korea through customs, but he couldn't take them because there was tight security. He asked them to carry out the operation. Indeed, Jae Hyuk agreed and started planning to rob the place with his friends. Joe then called John and gave him a large sum of money in exchange for telling him what Jae Hyuk was planning. The police began to investigate the theft of jewelry, and when they viewed the surveillance cameras, they saw Jae Hyuk carrying a bag which contained a smoke bomb. They saw him place it under the chair and knew he was the one who stole the jewelry. The police went to Jae Hyuk's house but did not find him, only pictures of all the thefts he had done. Jae Hyuk then went to the customs for the robbery, and they started exploring the place, putting explosives in the area where they would carry out their operation at a hacker device to help John penetrate the security systems. After completing their exploration, they returned to their homes. 
Jun and Zhang were with Jai Huck at his house, where they heard Jai Huck telling them that he wanted to betray Zhou and transfer the money to another place. Unfortunately for him, John had overheard what Jai Huck had said, so he went to Zhou and told him about Jai Huck's plan. Zhou decided to confront Jai Huck at a later time since he needed him at the moment. Meanwhile, Jai Huck went to the museum to meet his girlfriend June, but she ignored him and refused to talk to him because he had not been answering her calls. He apologized to her, but she refused his apology. He then told her how she could be upset with him, as he was her father's student. We know that Yoon Ho's father was a safe thief and that Jai Huck had learned to steal from him. He then told her about Joe and how Joe had brought him in order to help him in the robbery. He also told her that he had decided to take revenge on Joe because Joe was the murderer of Yoon's father. We know that one day Yoon's father decided to quit stealing, but on the second day Yoon's father was killed by Joe because Joe needed him for other robberies. Yoon didn't believe what Chuck said and Jay Huck went to his car. When Yoon gets in her car, someone from Joe's gang appears and kidnaps her in order to threaten Jai Huck. Another day, the theft begins and Jai Huck and his friends manage to enter the port. Jai Huck managed to bomb the place in order to distract the police so that he could steal the money. We watched him use his skills to disable the security systems, giving Jai Huck 40 minutes to open the safe. After this time, the safety systems will return to work. Jai Huck tried to open the safe and there was a little time left until the safety systems returned to work. But before the security systems returned to work, Jiak managed to open the safe and steal the money. Unfortunately, the police arrived and started walking around the port to see if anything was wrong. This made Jiak stay in his place and change the location of the money in order to hide it from Joe and his gang. However, he was surprised when Joe showed up, knowing about Jiak's plan. Joe then stopped him and asked him to turn himself into the police, but Jiak refused. Joe then showed him his necklace that Yoon had, telling him that if he wanted to save her, he should put the bag of explosives in the car and drag the police away from the place. If he did not do this, Joe would kill Yoon. With no other choice, Jae Huk brought the police towards him, but he decided to throw himself into the sea. The police managed to shoot him in the back, as he had explosives in his hand. When Jai Duck fell into the sea, it exploded and his friend Guy was left grieving for his death. However, John was happy with Jai Duck's death which caused a quarrel between Jong and ji that resulted in Gwen's death. Hours later, the car with the money arrived at Joe's headquarters. When Joe opened the car, he was surprised to find food vouchers worth $100, indicating that jai Huk was still alive. jai Huk then called Joe and revealed that it was all part of a plan to take revenge on Yoon's father. He had replaced the artifact with a fake one and put a listening device in it, knowing that Joe would buy it from the shop of the artifact's owner. Joe had bought something and put it in his office, but Jivuk managed to eavesdrop on him. Jivuk knew that Joe was looking for a professional thief, so he decided to rob Joe's play place in order to attract Joe's attention and choose him. It turns out that John was working for Jiyuk and Jiyuk asked John to do all of this so that Joe wouldn't suspect him. As for the police who shot him with a bullet, there were people working for Jiyuk and the bullet was fake. Jian also did not die and it was a trick so that they would not be exposed. Joe was losing hope, and the police started entering his house. When entered, he killed all his gang members. During their call, Jai Huck hit Joe in the car, allowing the police to arrest him. Here we see John saving Yoon and moving her to another place. As to the money that Joe saw, it was not real. It was made by the Jiuk machine, which when alcohol was placed on it changed its shape. Jai Huck was able to take the money and escape by car, and then he disappeared for months. One day, Yoon finds a suitcase full of money that Jai Huck had sent to her, and discovers that he had also opened an art gallery for her in the UA, which includes all of her paintings. She even finds her necklace, which was stolen by Joe and was a gift from her father, present in the gallery. Yoon is surprised by Jai Huck's presence, and they decide to get married and live happily ever after. Watch these interesting films and subscribe to the channel to access and watch more interesting movies.